first on the road into tomorrow. And the Ford dealers of your community present Ford Theater. Tonight, Eddie Bracken and Mona Freeman in The Marriage Plan with Donald McBride. See the game? What a finish. Yeah, I saw all but the finish. Our set went dead again, and by the time I found a quarter, the whole thing was over. Oh, well, Pilkey belted one right over the fence. <laughs> I heard it on the radio in the in the new car. Mm, that makes 29 home runs for... Did you say the new car? Is it not a thing of beauty? Johnny, you didn't trade in the coop. I had to. They offered me 1,500 bucks on that old waffle iron. How can I pass it up? But that old waffle iron was the only thing we owned outright. Well, you were going to borrow money on it to make a down payment on a lot, remember? I'm way ahead of you. All we got to do is use the equity on the new car to make a down payment on the lot. This way we own the lot and a new car. That's what's known as wheeling and a dealing. If you'd only bought the lot first. Will you stop worrying? I'm going to buy the lot. What a car. I think you're more enthusiastic about the new car than you are buying a piece of property. Well, as a matter of fact, I am. The only reason I'm buying the property at all is to please your mother. Buy property, buy property. Nevertheless, mother believes in one thing. On, on the, the land, land of, of your, your birth. birth. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's only property is an obsession with it. She's land happy. Well, if you hadn't obligated yourself with all those appliances, we could have paid for a lot by now. Look, honey, I only bought them to make things easier for you. No wife of mine is going to be deprived of any of the comforts of life if it takes every quarter I've got. That must be the refrigerator. Oh, no. Uh, and the stove. I don't have any quarters. We're all out of them. The mug? No, uh, empty. Well, I'll run across the hall. All right. Oh, hi, Mr. Fenwick. Oh. Have you got a quarter? Uh, why, uh, no, I have. Oh, well, I'll be back in a second. <laughs> for the stove and the refrigerator. Thanks, Susan. Always glad to oblige, neighbor. Oh, by the way, Johnny, as long as you're here, won't you come in and help me? My zipper won't unzip. I can't open my garment bag. Oh, well, I'll come back and do it later, Susan. Oh, don't forget, neighbor. Good old Susan. Excuse me, Mr. Fenwick. Here's two quarters for the mug. 
Oh, you better take one for the rotisserie. The, the chicken might stop. What time is it, Mr. Fenwick? It's 4.15. Well, it's not due till 6.45. <laughs> business. Oh, yes. Well, I have everything here to complete our transaction. Here are the escrow instructions, and here's the contract with the terms of sale as we discussed it. You both sign here, and then all that's required is your check for the down payment. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. Hello, Miss Stafford. Come in, Mr. Wimple. Hi, Mr. Stafford. Hello, Joe. Kind of early this time, huh? Uh, it's first of the month, that's jackpot day. And now the kitchen. Everything uh, been working all right for you, Mrs. Stafford? Oh, yes, wonderful, Mr. Wimple. Hmm. Been dining out a lot lately. No, we, we've just been eating a lot of cold cuts and things. Any medical man will tell you there's nothing like a hot meal for good health. Well, let's see how we did with the rotisserie. Perhaps you could borrow some money on your furniture or other possessions. I've only got equity in them, too. Mm. Mr. Stafford, you know better than to put a slug in the refrigerator. A slug? Now, how did that get in there? Through the little slot. Okay, see you folks the first of next month. Bye, Miss Wimple. Bye, Mr. Wimple. Maybe we could uh, make the down payments in installments. In installments? I got plenty of credit references. Whom, for instance? You name it, we owe everybody in town. I'll submit your offer to my client with my recommendation. Oh, fine. With my recommendation to turn it down. Oh. Good day, sir. <laughs> Johnny, you don't have to bother to come over to unzip my zipper. I did it myself. What is this about a zipper? A bomb and gag. A what? A garment bag. Had to... See, I'm sorry about the lot, honey. Well, Mother's going to be terribly disappointed when she arrives tomorrow. I told her we were buying a lot. How long is she going to stay this time? I don't know. A couple of days. That's what you said the last time. As I was saying, for generations, the Engelharts have been landowners. I say when a man owns a piece of land, he has a feeling of security. Land is like money in the bank, sometimes better. Look, Mrs. Engel... Mother, I've got a feeling of security without land. I don't go by the rule of the almighty dollar. You mean the almighty quarter. Mother... I never had to drop a quarter in the slot machine to wash your father's socks. If he wore socks. Well, what's wrong with a man wanting to buy a, a few of the comforts of life on the installment plan? Credit is the backbone of our country's economy, the very foundation. We Engelharts have always been property owners. Now you take Ellen's brother, Harvey. He owns a double bungalow. Yeah, one for each head. There goes the washing machine. Don't be too hard on John, Mother. He's a good husband and I love him. You want some more coffee? Hey, it's late. I've got to go. Bye. Bye. John forgot to put a quarter in him. Are you coming home for lunch, dear? Is your mother going to be here? Oh, please, John. J. H. Hathaway. Mr. Hathaway. 
Uh, good morning, sir. Oh, Mr. Hathaway. Yeah. Uh, you know that patch of land outside our apartment building? Well, what about it? Well, it's not a very pretty site. Well, that's the city's responsibility. I thought you owned it. I do, but not through any choice of mine. When we laid out that subdivision, the city surveyors miscalculated on the road. And that 20-foot piece was left over. So let the city take care of that worthless patch of weeds. Or you can. Uh, Mr. Hathaway, would uh, you consider selling that piece of land? Well, any property I own is for sale. How much you want for it? Well, I've never put a price on it. Uh, ten dollars a foot. Ten dollars? You just said it was a worthless patch of weeds. All right, eight dollars. I'll give you a dollar. A dollar? Why, I wouldn't even go to the trouble of drawing up the papers for a figure like that. But tell me, why do you want to buy it? Oh, I just want to own a piece of property. I've got to own a piece of property. Well, I think every young man should own property. So I'll, I'll sell it to you for a dollar a foot. You've got a deal. Oh, hello, dear. Hello, Luscious. Mother. <laughs> Ladies, you are now looking at a landowner I have just purchased a lot. <laughs> you did? I didn't know they put slot machines on lots. I'll have you know I paid cash. Oh, John, this is wonderful. I'll believe it when I see it. You can see it right now. I'll get your coat, Mother. She won't need a coat. Right this way, ladies. Feast your eyes, and it's all mine, clear. What? Fast. You bought that? It's property. <laughs> well, maybe now the Engelhots will stop turning over in their graves. What do you intend to do, build a phone booth on it? Well, it may not be the Yankee Stadium, but it's all mine. I mean, ours. You mean yours? I mean, what's the matter? Well, don't worry about oh, it. I have to worry. Well, I'll find use for it somehow. Oh, yes. Why don't you make it into your private golf course? Or, better yet, a retreat, where you can get away from it all. That's just what it's going to be. My little retreat, a place where I can get away from certain people. <laughs> well, get as far away as possible. Um. So, young Sam Thomas went and bought himself one of them fancy priced new automobiles, huh? <laughs> Nothing fancy about the price of that car, Uncle said. That's a 1957 Ford Custom 300. Now, Sonny, you mean to tell me that a car this big ain't high priced? <laughs> sure. Well, so help me, Uncle said. Ford's come out with the very first big cars in the low price field. Oh, man. Look how long this one is. Looks to be solid, too. Well, don't suppose it goes very far on a gallon of gas. Well, listen, Uncle said. You know Ford's always been the leader when it comes to building V8 engines. This car has Ford's silver anniversary V8. It's got more horsepower than ever before. But it's as economical as ever. Say, how is it you know so much about these new Fords, Sonny? Well, <laughs> I'll let you in on a little secret, Uncle Seth. Hi, gents. Say, Johnny, can I give you a lift down to the Ford dealers? They said they'd have your new Fairlane 500 Club Victoria ready. As I was about to say, Uncle Seth, I just bought a Ford myself. Ford's the only low-priced car to come in two different sizes. If you think this one's a lot for your money, wait till you see my Fairlane. You want to come along? No, I'm too old for that sort of thing. Or am I? This you won't believe. Morning. Oh, morning. Mind if I come in? Not at all. Step right over. Mike Healy, reporter with the Morning Glow. Oh, how do you do? I'm John Stafford. It's quite a layout you got here. 
I just happened to be passing. Uh, tell me, is this part of a TV show, or did you lose an election bet? Neither one. Well, isn't this an unusual place to be setting up housekeeping? Well, the truth is, I'm trying to prove a point. Oh, that one can live cheaper than nobody. <laughs> I'm really trying to teach my wife a lesson. You know, this is very interesting. Would you mind if I uh, did a story on you? Oh, not at all, not at all. <laughs> Spread it over the front page. He's serious about this thing. Well, what do I do? There's only one thing to do. When he comes in to eat, lock him up and call a psychiatrist. One with a built-in coin receptacle. <laughs> Susan. Hi, Johnny. I heard your little spat last night. Uh, I thought you'd be having breakfast out this morning. Oh, that's very nice of you, Susan. Mike Healy, Morning Glove. This is Susan Saunders, uh, Apartment A. How Good neighbor. Thank you. Do. <laughs> well. So you live across the hall, Miss Saunders. In Apartment A. This is very thoughtful of you, Susan. Just being neighborly, Johnny. <laughs> Are you going to put my name in your article, Mr. Healy? I certainly am. Oh, well, uh, won't you have some coffee, too? Well, don't mind if I do. Uh, that's why he was always running out of quarters. Quarters, indeed. Very tasty. Oh, hits the spot. If there's anything else you want, neighbor, just whistle. Thanks, neighbor. Bye now. lesson you're teaching your wife. Huh? Oh, it's an old lesson. That man must be the master of his home. Man, the Master of His Home by John Stafford as told to Mike Healy. Besides, I believe that man should own the land of his birth, even if it's only a tiny piece of it. Say, that could be an election slogan. You should be in politics. I am. What party? Both parties. My wife and my mother-in-law. <laughs> What's he doing now? He just turned in. You mean he's actually going to sleep out there? It looks like it. He's trying to be a martyr. He'll freeze to death. Don't worry, darling. He'll be warmer tonight than you. The martyr hooked up the electric blanket. Tom, come on, get down here. Oh. Mass 
desk robbery, huh? Well, I was only trying to jimmy open the window. That's good enough for me. Come on, let's go. Now, wait a minute. I live here. Tell that to the sergeant. I can't go down and see the sergeant in my pajamas. Oh, no? In that outfit, you could get an extra rep for indecent exposure. Oh, sir. Is that you, Johnny? Oh, hi, Susan. What's the matter? Do you know this guy, lady? Of course she knows me. She's my cross-the-hall neighbor. What was he doing? I caught him trying to jimmy open a window. Why were you doing that, Johnny? Ellen, unplug my electric blanket. Oh, it must have been an accident. Accident in my eye. She unplugged it, threw it out, and then closed the window. I could catch it. Oh, dear, pneumonia. Bless you. What, what's this about an electric blanket? The one I use out there. Stafford Acres. That's what I call it. Any objections? You can't camp out there. Who says I can't? I own that property. Yes, he does, officer. Well, I've got the deeds right. Well, it's all clear. Oh, dear. Bless you. Look, just for my own information, what's this all about? Well, it's a sort of a retreat. A retreat from what? From my wife and my mother-in-law. Say no more, bud. I understand. I'm freezing. I'll just have to do something about that. Hand me the cord. Oh. You can use my electricity. Oh, thanks, Susan. Just be a neighborly. Pleasant dreams, Johnny. breakfast. My boss wants me to do a whole series on you. You know, human interest stuff. Yeah, that's what we need around here. A little more human interest. So you uh, actually spent the night here last night, huh? I certainly did. And if it hadn't been for Miss Saunders, I'd have frozen to death. Huh? All I did was help him get his blanket warm. That did it. We you know, Susan, I think I ought to pay you something for the use of your electricity, a quarter or something. You do nothing of the sort. After all, I was just being neighborly. I'm sure you do the same for me. Absolutely. You can use my power anytime. Oh, hello, dear. Good morning. This is Stafford, I presume. You presume correctly. Uh, this is Mike Keeley, the Morning Globe, uh, and this is Miss Saunders. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. Well, if you'll all excuse me. Uh, thanks for breakfast, Susie. Uh, Miss Saunders. And thanks for helping me keep warm last night. Well, somebody unplugged my electric blanket. And Susan just let me use her electricity. How neighborly. John Stafford, how long are you going to keep up this ridiculous exhibition? Ridiculous? Yes. What's ridiculous about a man trying to get away from the hustle and the bustle of the city? Well, you're the laughing stock of the entire neighborhood. Laughing stock, eh? Will you read my story in tomorrow's paper? Well, surely you're not going to print this fantastic farce. Well, it's a good offbeat story, Mrs. Stafford, especially your husband's theories about man's independence. That's... Yes, very offbeat. Uh, excuse me. Oh, hi, Mr. Hathaway. Uh, well. Mr. Haley, Morning Globe, and this How is you my know? wife. Uh, Mr. Hathaway is the man who sold me the property. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself for taking advantage of an irresponsible Irresponsible person. Irresponsible? Yes. Now you're beginning to sound like your mother. Well, is that bad? Yeah, yes. I'm sorry. Of course, if I, I've been the cause of many misunderstanding in this family. So I'll take the property off your hands. I'm not selling. John, if you don't... I'll... I am the master in my house, and I'm not selling my property. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Hathaway, why do you want this property back? Well, I thought I'd landscape it and donate it to the city. It uh, wouldn't have anything to do with the new freeway, would it, Mr. Hathaway? What freeway? The one the city council decided to put through here. Oh. 
happy way. Oh, <laughs> you don't say. Of course, I think every man's entitled. So I made out a, a dollar and a half. It will cost you ten. What? A square foot. When did piece of property's value increasing over a hundred times per hour? In America, Mr. Hathaway, where else? Now, besides, this is improved property. It's, it's a dwelling. You're a sharp trader, Stafford. It. But it's a deal. Make the check out to both of us. It's community property, you know. Thanks, Mr. Healy. Well, Ellen? You're an absolute genius. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you to do business with you, Hathaway. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> Mr. Healy's article about you is called Man, the Master of His Home. <laughs> What's funny about it? Oh, nothing at all, son. It's as it should be. Oh, that must be the refrigerator. I'll take care of it. A quarter, please. Oh, uh, I'm all out. Uh, I'll go over to Susan's. Oh, no, you don't. Oh. <laughs>